Hello and welcome to the Away Day Experience Show here on Back of the Net. I'm Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And if you're a Liverpool fan or a fan of any Premier League club, you might be interested in this series because we'll be visiting your stadium and we'll be rating it for a number of factors. And it's a really good show to do, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's um, one where we leave the everything that happened on the pitch, we forget about it, which I'm really pleased about <laughs> for this one, I must say. And we just talk about our away experience as a whole. There's loads of different categories. Shall I go through the categories for them? Yes, please. Yeah, tell me what you rate each stadium on. So we go for the pre-match experience. So whatever you do before the game, you know, whether you go for a, some people go for a wander, go to a cafe. We normally get, go to the pub where the away fans are allowed. And we just talk about how it is getting there as well, parking, all that stuff. Everything before the game kicks off. Then we go into the concourse and the refreshments and, you know, what, what the accessibility is like in that sense. Then we go on to the stadium and the view. What's it like in there? What's it like where you sat? And um, then we go on to the atmosphere within the stadium and what are the, basically go on what the home fans are like. Um, and then we talk about the people itself, the fans of our opposition, um, how friendly they are and if we, if we spoke to many of them and yeah, and all that stuff. So we've got a nice, nice few areas there. And I've got to say, thanks so much for the comments that we had from a lot of Man City fans on, mm. our, on our last video. A lot of them are saying we've actually been quite fair. I was watching the video back thinking, oh, did we sort of downscore them on the pre-match experience? But a lot of them were in agreement and we had over 10,000 views on that video, which for a, a little dinky channel like us is great. Nearly as many views as seats in our stadium. So that's that's how it went for us. But Tom, mm. I'm really interested to see what club we're doing this week. Do you want to reveal all? I don't know how that makes me feel when I look at that crest at the moment, mate. I really don't know. But we're not talking about football. No, not. thank God, because this has been a... I mean, you can see, I mean, Man City and then Liverpool for the first two away day reviews. I'm just so glad we'd have to talk about the football this time, man. Mm. And we rate them, mm. and then what we do is we put them onto a tier list at the end. So we don't add up the scores, do a totaliser and divide it by two or anything like that. There's no complicated algorithm. It's just how we feel. So even though we talk over those five points, Tom, mm. there are a number of categories we're going to put them in. Let's go from bottom to top. What have we got, mate? Right at the bottom is waste of petrol. So I just wish we never went. It was horrific. Just above that, we got Mare. Not the best. So probably expected better. Mm. Right in the middle, where our only club at the moment, Man City, have gone. It's can't complain. Yeah. So pretty happy, but could have been better. And if you go back and watch that video, you'll see why we rated it there. Then we go for Decent Day. So really happy with what, what we had. It was it was nearly perfect, but if it was perfect, it'd be right at the top in Banging Visit, which is everything we could have hoped for and more so hopefully all them categories will be filled up because that makes it look nice but really i just want a few banging visits in there right liverpool fans you might want to prick your ears up because in 20 seconds time we're going to get our teeth into the anfield experience but before then if you are a red or if you are a fan of the cherries that have yet to do so or if you're a fan of another premier league club there's a little button you can click quite big actually mm. it's called the subscribe button and it's yeah. it's almost it's annoying because when you're watching a video if you haven't subscribed it's in the corner of your eye there's yeah. big red but click it and if you're a Liverpool fan just click red you love clicking red and you're red <laughs> see what you've done there um, yeah so give that a click really appreciate it and do the like and all that stuff and yeah it'd be much appreciated right then let's get into the pre-match experience the drive mm. up to Liverpool I don't know if this is um, a thing that recently but uh, the Saturday drive is always better than a Friday drive yeah. so Saturday the roads were clear really easy to get into Liverpool four and a half hours or so we stopped at Warwick as well and we did a bit of a just park or your parking space or something didn't we yeah. managed to park really easily uh, near Brexide Park I think it was mm. 15 minute walk into Anfield that was quite good and look loads of things to do in Liverpool what an amazing city it is I've been on a few nights out in Liverpool some fans stayed over made a weekend of it our very own Jeff Hayward there extended weekend he's he, he, he drove back on the bank holiday Monday loads of nightlife a good okay. shopping I love it love yeah. it so loads to do yeah loads to do and as you say mate it was quite that there was the yeah just using the just park app loads of loads of places to park around which was which was nice and less hassle and yeah to be fair i know a, a few fans that stayed up on that friday night and it was a lot harder to get up bank yeah. holiday weekend obviously as well um pretty easy for we've we done it in really good time actually didn't we mm -hmm. i think we what time we let seven half seven something like yeah. that we got up by midday easily didn't we so yeah that was that was decent and yeah, to be fair, when we got there, nice little walk over to the Arkles, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and as you say, about a 10-15 minute walk from where we parked. It's very close to the ground as well, which is very really, close. really, really handy. Yeah. You can see it, can't you? It's actually close to the away end as yeah, well. Yeah. Ideal. Um, I think it's actually, it's mixed, isn't it? The park? Yeah, it is, yeah. But, um, and we'll come on to the people and stuff, but it was, it was really nice. It was a nice kind of vibe in there. They had the early game on, which unfortunately for 
Liverpool fans, United, Manchester, Nick. Um, we weren't as bothered because it was against Southampton. Yeah. But I like the pub. I do like the pub. Um, I'm sure there's loads of stuff you can do there pre-match. We went there and it was really, really nice. And a lot of Bournemouth fans in there. Um, even though it's really busy, the, the, I tell you what I hate going to certain away games. They must know how busy it's going to be and they've got like one or two members behind the bar. We're they had about five staff. We're talking about you, the Arrow, in Yeovil. <laughs> yeah. Weird how Liverpool have got better facilities than yeah, Yeovil. Weird that. But no, that's what I liked about it. You get in there and you see how many people are in there. You think, it's going to be a nightmare to get served. Yeah. Easy, because they had staff on. And then I went out into the like kind of beer garden smoking area. There's another bar out there. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. Yeah, so yeah, really well done. They obviously, they're aware. As, as they should be, but a lot aren't, as I say. So they were aware of there's going to be a lot of fans here, a lot of people coming in. So, yeah, really enjoyed pretty much, to be honest, mate. They can't have too many complaints. And just outside the back of the cop, where the Liverpool Club store is, there was also a big sort of fan park area mm. as well, with a stage, big screen, and lots going on outside there as well, if you're, if you're not into going to a pub. Um, there, was, there was a fair bit to do. So in terms of the pre-match experience then, mate, where, whereabouts are you, are you rating this? I wish I was still in pre-match. Um, but yeah, I can't really have any complaints, so I'm going to give it a good solid eight. Eight for pre-match experience. And look, also around the cop, you've got lots of photo opportunities as well. It's similar to Man City. Less, less of a touristy vibe, I've got to say, mm. around Liverpool. But that may change later on within the show on some of our other categories. But we'll go on to concourse and refreshments. And look, you go in, mm. you sort of walk down a few steps and there's the concourse. It's uh, it felt small the first time I went to Anfield, but there are some double doors that open up into another area. So actually, it wasn't too bad for space. No, no, I thought the same. And um, I think that we're probably going to find this. I mean, let us know if you know, but we saw it at Mad City. When we're in the Championship at half time, they, they often open the doors up for the back and you can go outside. So whether we have a cigarette or just to get a bit more space. Yeah. And we've noticed Mad City we couldn't, Liverpool we couldn't. And I'm starting to think, I wonder if it's a little bit different in the Premier yeah. League. Because I think both stewards in both games have said, we'd have to search you if you come back in. Yeah. So that might be why. So I'm not going to, you have to take that with a pinch of salt if that's the case, because um, that always gives you a bit more space. But to be fair, for the fact that, um, you know, we had a lot of fans in, in that way and it was, I, I didn't feel crowded in the concourse. No, I didn't. Uh, plenty were down there before the half-time whistle went, um, as I'm sure you can imagine. But it was it was easy and I easily got served. Um, I had a bottle of beer in there, which was fine. I had um, a hot dog, mate. I had so, a hot dog. Yeah, and I, you know what? A the most hot, standard hot dog you've ever had. It was a rollover, wasn't it? What can you say about hot dogs, really? It's but just typical. It was, I think it's exactly the same as what we have. Yeah, it? they did do pies as well, stuff like that. And mm. you know what? I, I even I even bought myself a, a packet of 12 bites as oh, well for the it? second half, because I thought, you know what? I can't have popcorn watching this kind of football. Okay. Let's let's have some 12 bites as well. But you know what? I, um, I didn't mind it at all, mate. It's one of them, nothing spectacular, but nothing wrong with it either. Um, seven, got me a seven for me. Oh. The bar staff also, by the way, they, they were all wearing AFC Bournemouth t-shirts as well, saying we're on our way, we're on our way. I think but... they wanted to take them off. <laughs> yeah, Jesus so, that, so that was a nice, nice touch, but yes, seven. Seven, seven for me, mate, because it was, it, was, it was fine, seven. Yeah. So Anfield, of course, is a stadium steeped in history. Mm. Had many, many a league title won there, and also a Premier League title, of course, lest we forget, not in front of fans, but it's it's a stadium that's had glory-filled European nights. It's an old stadium. It's being developed, the, uh, the, and the Anfield Road end is going to be extended as well. We saw that when we were walking around the back of it. It's clever the way they do it these days. Uh, days. They kind of build the back of it and then they manage to connect the two and do mm. all this kind of stuff. Not sure when it's going to be open, but it's, um, it's going to be even more impressive, increasing its capacity. Stadium, thoughts on it, mate? I like it. Safe standing, which is good. Yeah, yeah, and I do like it because I think it's got a really nice blend of having that, that character and, as you say, you know, all the history and tradition they've got there, but it is still a really nice modern stadium as well. So I quite, I quite like that. Um, the view as well is absolutely fine. No real problems no. there with that view. It's it's nice where you're sat, I think. Um, I mean, I did, where well, we were sat kind of in that corner, at the, so I, I missed Salah's miss. You know when he missed it? I just had yeah. that for the score. It's kind of got can't a, quite see that corner sometimes. Yeah, it's got quite a, this may change mm. when um, the new stadium is redeveloped, but it's quite a low gradient on your seating, which means that, you, you know, sometimes you're having to, you know, go on your tippy toes to look yeah. over people's heads to see what's going on. Like you say, on the far side, you know, I barely saw it as well. I wasn't sure how, how, how close it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, we, you know, really liked it, really liked the yeah. view and just, you know, the different, I like stadiums that have got different stands and, I, you know, I know that these days it's more cheaper, efficient uh, to like build a bowl yeah. type stadium, say, yeah. but 
I do like four stands that are filled in, that have got that kind of square look and then really close to the pitch as well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, no, I've got to agree. Yeah, and I, I, to be fair, I've been there a few times now and I do, when I think about the stadium and the view, I'm always like, oh yeah, this is a good one. Mm. So yeah, can't mark it down too much. So I, I'm going to go for an eight because it's, yeah. it's, it's a nice stadium and it's a nice view. Okay, Tom's going for an eight. Right then, mate, the atmosphere. This is, this is interesting. When we went to the Etihad, I was actually really impressed with them. Yeah. At Anfield, though, it was very different. We're louder than their fans were right now, yeah. and even if I talk like that. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I've said to, I said to a few people, because I've been there a few times, there's a few people that were having their first trip to Anfield, and I said, just don't get your ropes out, because you'll never walk alone. It's brilliant, by the way. Mm. They sing that at the start. It's almost like airs on the back of your neck. It's like, unbelievable yeah, yeah, how they yeah. do that. And I said, but don't expect much after, but I still did not expect this. And let's caveat this with... We're aware there's a lot of tourists. There's a lot of tourists in there. Mm. I'm sure your hardcore Liverpool fans will, would want a better atmosphere. The tourists were visible from where we were sat as For well. For sure. They were visible. A lot of half-half scarves, things like yeah, that. Yeah. Which you're going to get because you're a massive football club. And also caveat with they're playing Bournemouth. Yeah. Um, I, I don't like massive, that. Massive, by the way, yeah. massive. I don't like that because I feel like, but it's just the way the way it is. We we would have even little Bournemouth. We're gonna have a better atmosphere, whatever Premier League fixture, than we would in, against Bournemouth in the cup. Mm. It's just it's the way it is. So I do appreciate that, and I know that when they're playing United or whatever, yeah. it'll probably be pumping in there in the European nights we've seen on the telly. Yeah. But we are doing an experience on this game, and yeah. I have n I can't remember ever being at a game where I've heard little that little from the home fans mm. ever they sang you never walk alone i think at one point i heard him say liverpool yeah that was it uh i'm trying to think was there anything else no did they say i didn't hear them sing mo salah's name did sing any players did they sing Firmino's name he got the score sheet twice he didn't don't know. Think so um virgil van dyke no don't think so it, it was unbelievable i mean and it was i've got a few little recordings of that and i'm sure other people have and yeah we're set we're seven nil down we're eight nil down we're nine nil down and you're thinking they're just sat there yeah. And we're just like taunting them, like give us a song, and there's nothing. It's, it's quite interesting. I think I don't the, get it. the acoustics in certain stadiums lend to certain fan bases sounding really loud. For instance, so I'm harping back to the championship, but when we play Blackpool, the design of their stadium means the sound sort of goes up into the roof, but then gets pushed out onto the pitch. Whereas the cop, mm. like that's their notorious, this is where the sound comes from. Um, you, where, where, we can only see like half their fans because a lot of them are like kind of under the roof and I've got a feeling that a lot of the sound probably goes up into the roof the, a little bit. So we don't, so whether they were singing, there may have been. Um, I'd like to watch some Liverpool vlogs really, but from yeah. what we could hear though, and it I, didn't carry very well at all. And I think the fact that they do like You'll Never Walk Alone and it is so good means, see if you all sing, it's amazing. It's great, yeah. So yeah, and I couldn't get my head around it. And then the fact that they've, you know, they haven't won this season and they've absolutely blown us away. I can't believe they weren't just really, you know, so appreciative for the team and just really getting. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Um, it it was weird. Um, I've heard more noise in a, you know, in a cinema and like whatever. Mm. I, I honestly, it's it's a shame because we got we got another category where we'll come on to, so I'll be able to explain that point of view because I've got nothing against them. No, no. And you know, and they they were so bloody good um, on the pitch. I just honestly, I was I was baffled at, at how quite absolutely I couldn't believe that I was in a football stadium. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, crazy. Um, it's a shame because the other categories are doing well, but I can. I'm going to literally because you'll never walk alone. They get one point. One point for the atmosphere. Wow. Okay. Right. Next, let's let's talk about the people. The people of Liverpool. Uh, I've got to say something actually. Uh, we parked at Just Park, or using Just Park on a, on a driveway, and I wasn't sure from the instructions. It was a bit kind of vague, like, do I park on the back parking space or do I park outside the front of the property? And I gave the woman a call, and she was friendly, friendly as hell, and she said, you know, if you want to pop in uh, and use the facilities, I can even drop you down if you want. And you had a similar experience as well, didn't you, with your Just Park? Yeah, we had exactly the same. We had a decent-sized driveway, and a few cars were coming in. he came come out, met us, said, you know, we had um, Steve's lads with us, and... I said, does anyone want to come in, use the toilet, do you want to drink or anything? Like, told us directions to get down, said when you come back, you know, you can always use it. They were just, yeah, he was just so friendly, he was chatting to us after, was really kind of come out sheepishly and said, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and again, all the people before the game, in the pub, after the game, were just so, so great. And I've, I've been Liverpool a few times and they're the best. Mm. They're, they're the best, best the, the people are so friendly. Um, they're so friendly, they're so passionate about their football club, which probably coincides with why I get 
I'm, I'm really annoyed from about the atmosphere. Yeah. Just going back to that a little bit. But the actual, yeah, the, the people are just, I mean, there was a there was a few young lads on bikes that were giving us some grief, yeah. which, yeah, you got, you just lost 9 nil. But all of them were like, ah, oh, you, you, no one really wanted to play us today. You yeah. know, unlucky lads, you know, you'll be fine. Blah, They're blah, very blah. humble in defeat. Yeah, really uh, A lot of humility there. And when we when we walk in towards the, the Arkles, we sort of went past a pub because one of the people we were needed to nip in uh, to go to the loo. The guy came out, I think it was the Willow Gate pub, he said, all right, lads, I'm not going to do the accent. I just did. But he said, look, you know, like, if you want to come in, you're more than welcome. Yes, it's full of reds, but, you know, we'd welcome you with open arms. If you yeah. want to pop in, have a chat, it's got the football on. He was like a walking salesman for the pub, but he wasn't. He was just a client and he was with his lad and they were off to football. And he was just really, really nice. And yeah. then the people outside the ground, inside the pub, I chatted to a number of people in the Arkles and stuff. And they were they were absolutely sound as well, yeah. like having a laugh. Maybe maybe a bit more humble because the start of their season was so bad maybe i don't know i get the feeling they'd be like it anyway mm. really nice touch when you walk through the turnstiles there was a steward uh, a lady in her 60s on the other side and she said welcome to anfield and uh, just that just little made things, me yeah. that just a little touch there but i thought that's so nice i love that yeah they they were great mate. really great i can't speak hard enough of of them to be fair as i say every time i've been there i've just always been you know, just just really like wow, these are just really friendly people, uh, lovely people. So yeah, got a, got a soft spot for Scousers because of that. So um, yeah, mate. As I say, really disappointed to have to mark the atmosphere as I did. But for the people, I'm going for a nine. Nine. I'm going for a nine. And um, unless I got, a, if I got a kiss of the cuddle and some, you know, they gave me some money or something. That's the only way. That, apart well, from that, perfect. Listen, listen to this, right? Oh, listen to this. Cherry's fan called Kirsty Thornton. This is a tweet that she wrote at 10 o'clock on Saturday night. Fair play to the old, the old man Liverpool fan who gave my boys five pounds outside the Anfield Stadium to buy some sweets to cheer them up after the Amazing. defeat. Northerners are the best though, aren't <laughs> they? Uh, you know, heart emoji, so friendly. I mean, that's brilliant. Brilliant, I wish I found him though. Yeah. We've done with some sweets. I mean, yeah, I, had, yeah. I had some wine gums left, to be fair. So but no, nine, mate, and uh, can't speak hard enough. But if any of, if um, this is kind of a new category we've done from last season, you know, because so, we talked to a lot of the the opposition fans and you know the people in general, so we wanted to put this as a category. And it will be if anyone comes close, I'll be surprised. Mm. Um, amazing, amazing people. So yeah, can't speak hard enough. Um, that's why I'm so disappointed I had to do the atmosphere. Because yeah. tell you what, these could be doing so well. If it was, uh, if we were a fan of say, I don't know, Real Madrid, and we were coming on European night, the atmosphere might have been better. But we're little old Bournemouth, so we've got to go on that game, mate. So let's bring up the tier list then. Here it is on screen, and there's one club that we've been mm. to away so far. But the Anfield experience was our second on the pitch. It wasn't particularly good. But Tom, mm. whereabouts are you going to put Liverpool in the tier list? I'm really interested in this. Yeah, I'm kind of flirting between two. I am flirting between two, and obviously, as we keep mentioning, we're taking out what happened on the pitch because otherwise it'd be gone. Yeah. Because it probably was a waste of petrol if it was just for the on the pitch, which is why I love away games because imagine if you just went there for the game and went home. Yeah. How bad would that have been? Um, oh, I tell you, the atmosphere was was so bad it makes me think, oh, does it go with City? But then I'm thinking about City as a whole. As I said, we were actually thought the atmosphere was okay. Yeah. So, but then I think of it as a whole. Go apart from the atmosphere, nothing was as good as as Liverpool. Yeah. So it's going a category higher. I'm putting it in decent day. Decent day. So City might be the favourites for the league title, but in this tier list, Liverpool have pipped them. Yeah, and you know what? Um, I yeah, I I think that is absolutely fair as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Nice one. And so if you want to chart your progress uh, during the season, because we will also maybe recalibrate towards the end of the season as well, just to because look, when you go to one club and you just rate them straight away it is unfair because yeah. there can be others that can be better and you think oh no actually i've probably done that one and missed justice or whatever yeah we're gonna we're gonna recalibrate we've done that so. last season you yeah. can so often like you know these two teams for example we can get to like march and go well this is probably in this category but then city was much better mm. so yeah we normally do a bit of a recap so you know keep an eye on that but um yeah just going off what we what we can at the moment and um i think liverpool just pipped city for me mate but both of them apart from on the pitch mm. both of them were were good away trips i was happy Love it. Right. Thank you so much for watching. See you later on. You have the chairs. Have the chairs. See you later. See you later. Oh, if you'd gone, right, start again. <laughs> <laughs>